this is Algebra 1, and we are going to review solving a system by graphing, by substitution, and by elimination. And obviously, since I have a graph already set up, we are going to solve this system of equations by graphing. Anytime that we're going to solve by graphing, the very first thing we are going to do is solve each equation for y. When we solve an equation for y, that allows us to put it in slope-intercept form. So we're going to take the first equation, which I'll keep green. So the first equation, negative 2x plus y equals 5. In order to get the y by itself, we need to add 2x to both sides. Therefore, y equals 2x plus 5. This allows us to easily see that our slope for the green line is 2 over 1 and our y-intercept is 5 and we can graph that easily once we get it in slope-intercept form. So there's my y-intercept at 0, 5. My slope is 2 over 1. By definition, slope is rise over run. So we'll be going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. We can also go down 2, back 1, down 2, back 1. And as I've advised in previous videos, use a straight edge to mark your lines to keep your graphs as precise as possible. So there's our equation number one, the green line. Let's work on equation number two, which is 18x minus 3y equals negative 3. Once again, we're going to solve for y because when we solve for y, we put it in slope-intercept form. So minus 18x minus 18x negative 3y equals negative 18x minus 3. Be careful with the signs here. Divide everything by negative 3. And we get a brand new equation transformed. y equals negative 18x divided by 3 is positive 6x. Negative 3 divided by negative 3 is plus 1. So we have a slope of 6 over 1, a very steep line, and a y-intercept at 0, 1. So let's plot that point, and then let's rise and run using our slope. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1. Down 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 over 1. And we get our pink line. Like I said, it's very steep because it has a slope of 6. And we can see where the two lines intersect. That's the solution to our system. These two lines intersect at exactly one and only one point, and that point is over 1 up 7. And that is our solution. That will make both of these equations true at the same time. Let's give them a quick check. So negative 2 times 1 plus 7, does it equal 5? It does indeed. It checks into the second one. That will be 18 times 1 minus 3 times 7, does it equal negative 3? 18 minus 21, does it indeed equal negative 3? They both check. That is solving by graphing. Next, we have x minus y equals 7. And y minus 8 equals 2x. Um, lots of options here. We could get everything vertically aligned and we could solve using elimination. Or we could easily solve for x or y in the first equation. Or easily solve for y in the second equation and use substitution. I think I'm going to use substitution here. Because the easiest thing to do is get that x by itself by simply adding y to both sides of that top equation. So x equals 7 plus y. So like we learned in class, we can make an equivalent substitution. So there's x in terms of y. We can plug it in right there for that x, and then we can solve. y minus 8 equals 2 times x. x is 7 plus y. So now we've got a simple equation to solve. The first thing we need to do is use the distributive property there on the right. 
y minus 8 equals 14 plus 2y. Solve this one. Minus y minus y. Negative 8 equals 14 plus y minus 14 minus 14. y equals negative 22. So now that we know y, the y value is negative 22, we can plug it in pretty much anywhere because now we need to solve for x. Probably the easiest place is here because the x is already isolated. So x equals 7 plus y, which is negative 22. And 7 plus negative 22 is negative 15. There's our y, excuse me, there's our x, there's our y. So our answer is negative 15, negative 22. And we can check it by plugging it back into both of those equations. Let's do that quickly. So first equation, x minus y. So x minus y does it equal 7? Well, minus a negative turns into plus a positive, and yes, 7 is equal to 7. Second equation, y minus x, so negative 22, y minus 8, excuse me, equals 2 times x. x is negative 15, negative 22 minus 8 is negative 30, and 2 times negative 15 is negative 30. They both check, therefore, our solution is a true solution. Next, 2x plus y equals negative 12. Negative 4x minus 2y equals 30. Um, th this system appears to be lined up vertically. x is over x's, y's over y's, equal signs, constants. So why don't we give elimination a shot here? So the first thing I'm going to do is decide what I want to cancel. Um, I think let's go for the x's. So in order to make the x's cancel, I need opposite coefficients. And coefficients are the numbers that precede the variables. So right now I have a positive 2 and a negative 4. I need for the top to be positive 4. So in order to get positive 4 on the top, I am going to multiply both sides of this equation by 2. So let's move that over to the right, and I will be distributing on the left and the right. So 2 times 2x is 4x, 2 times y is 2y, 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. Let's move that second equation over. It needs no transforming. It's ready to go. So now we're set up. Our x's are going to cancel because they have opposite coefficients. So positive 4 and a negative 4 are gone. Oh my, a positive 2 and a negative 2 also gone. Everything has canceled on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, negative 24 plus 30 is 6. Is this true or false? It is false. And like we learned in class, if everything cancels on one side completely and we get a false statement, we know that these two lines must, lines must be parallel. And of course, parallel lines will never intersect, therefore there are no solutions for this system because the lines are parallel. Here we've got 8x plus 2y equals negative 2 and y is already solved for negative 5x plus 1. This is a definite go straight to substitution here. So here's our value for y and we will be plugging it in for the y in the first equation. So let's move down the page a little bit. So this is y, we're plugging it in here. So 8x plus 2 times y equals negative 2. y is negative 5x plus 1. We're going to solve for x over here. So let's use the distributive property. So 8x 
and then 2 times negative 5x is negative 10x, 2 times 2 is 2. We now have the opportunity to combine like terms on the left, CLT, 8x minus 10x is negative 2x plus 2 equals negative 2 minus 2 minus 2. I'm solving for x. Negative 2 times x equals negative 4. x is 2. Now, in order to find out what y is, we just need to take our value for x and substitute it back in. y equals negative 5 times x plus 1. y equals negative 10 plus 1. y equals negative 9. There's x, there's y. 2 comma negative 9 is our point where these two lines would intersect on the coordinate plane. Last question is a word problem. We will have two word problems on our test this week. So first thing we're going to do is completely sit our pen or pencil down and we're going to read it. Anne owns a cake shop and she is working on two wedding cakes this week. The first cake consists of five small tiers and five medium tiers which will serve 370 guests. The second cake has five small tiers and three medium tiers, which will serve 264 guests. How many servings does each size of tier serve? So now let's pick up our pen and let's go back and let's start highlighting and underlining what's important. So, okay, Anne owns a cake shop. She's working on two cakes. This, this whole first sentence is just background information. The second sentence is where we get into the first cake. The first cake has five smalls and five medium tiers, which will serve a total of 370 guests. So cake number one, cake number one, and we're gonna let, of course, S represent small tiers and M represent medium tiers. So cake one, is five small plus five medium equals 370 guests. So that is cake number one. Let's look at the second cake. So now we've got second cake. Second cake has five small and three medium, and it's going to serve a total of 264. This is where we get our second equation from. Cake number two, less guests, so less tiers. Still starting with five small, but this time only three medium and a total of 264. How many servings does each size of tier serve? So we're trying to solve for S and M. S being small tiers, M being medium tiers. So here's our system. And right away, it is completely set up to do elimination. So 5, 5s five over 5s. We can quickly um, make get opposite coefficients by just multiplying this top one by negative 1. And it will change to negative 5s minus 5m equals negative 370. And then the second equation in orange here, it just needs to be brought straight over. It needs no transforming. So 5s plus 3m equals 264. We are totally set up for elimination here. We've got opposite coefficients on the s's. The s's cancel. Negative 5m plus 3m is negative 2m. And negative 370 plus 264, so 370 minus 264 is 106 so negative so negative 106 which it wouldn't make any sense at all if we got a negative answer here because we're talking about actual servings of cake so divide by negative 2 and we see that each medium tier 106 divided by 2 that is 53 each medium tier is 53 servings. That's a bunch of servings of cake. 
So if that is M, if that is M, what are we going to do with it? We're going to take our value for M and let's just plug it back in right there. So 5S plus 3 times 53 equals 264. This is going to allow us to find out how many servings are in the small tiers. So 5S plus 3 times 53. 3 times 50 is 150. 3 times 3 is 9. So this is 159, which we will be subtracting from both sides. So we end up with 5S equals 264 minus 159. Get my subtraction correct. Let's see, that is 5. That is 105. So each small, so 5S equals 105 divided by 5 divided by 5. Each small will serve 21 servings. So 21 servings of cake out of a small tier. 53 servings of cake out of a medium tier for and wedding cakes. So once again, think about what we did. We read the entire problem and then we went back and we wrote the equations. Then we solved it with elimination. So medium tiers, 53 servings each, small tiers, 21 servings each.